Hi everyone, and welcome to the first APR Tech video. General Electrics, or GE, is one of the more famous American multinational conglomerate corporations. Ranging from everyday kitchen appliances to making some of the biggest bombs in history, it can easily be said that General Electrics puts up fairly well to all of its competitors. Let's see how big the company is today, its history, and any deep secrets or stories that GE is trying to hide. So GE today is headquartered in Boston, Massachusetts, and incorporated in New York. GE operates in appliances, power and water, oil and gas, energy management, aviation, healthcare, transportation, and capital, which cater to the needs of home appliances, financial services, medical devices, life sciences, pharmaceutical, automotive, software development, and engineering industries. As its name implies, General Electric can trace its roots to the early power industry. It was founded in 1892, the result of a merger of the competing companies Edison General Electric Company and the Thomas Houston Company. The merger was not fully supported by Thomas Edison himself, who withdrew from the running of the business and returned to the laboratory. Following Edison's example, GE established its permanent research laboratory in Skankady, New York in 1900. Not very surprisingly, GE first focused on the power industry, creating items such as electric lamps, generators, alternators, motors, and other things. But even in its early years, it began researching other areas, such as the radio. The company was also a manufacturer of vacuum tubes for radios, and of x-ray tubes and complete x-ray machines, beginning around 1912. In 1919, a GE researcher invented an important tube called the magnetron, which has been in use for many years in microwave systems. From the 1920s onward, for example, GE made superchargers for cars and airplanes, and in 1940, it manufactured an experimental jet engine. The company is today one of the largest manufacturers of military and commercial jet aircraft engines. In the 1940s, General Electric became a huge manufacturer of electric trains. Numerous inventors had experimented with these from the 19th century onwards, and there were electric trolley systems in major cities around the world in the early 1900s. A major shift came after about 1940 when diesel electric locomotives, which carry a diesel generator to run an electric motor, replaced steam locomotives. GE manufactured many of these large locomotives. Early in its history, the company began to be involved in technologies that were not strictly electrical. Then, in 1985, GE purchased RCA, as it previously did in the early 1900s. Now that we've looked at the general history of GE, let's look at some of the deeper secrets or stories of GE. So it all starts off with a bright young man named Nikola Tesla. Born in Austro-Hungary, now Croatia, in 1856, Tesla constructed his first induction motor in 1883 and immigrated to America in 1884, arriving in New York with just four cents in his pocket. Tesla began working with Thomas Edison, but the two men were worlds apart in both their science and cultures. The fact that Tesla's alternating current concept posed a direct threat to sales of Edison's direct current devices probably didn't help, and they soon went their separate ways. However, some people might not know the fact that Thomas Edison tricked and played Tesla. Thomas Edison had invented the concept of DC, or direct current, which was not very effective. Edison claimed that direct current maintained lower voltage from power station to consumer and was, therefore, safer. Tesla came up with the idea of alternating currents, or AC. Tesla claimed that AC currents were more realistic because AC technology, which allows the flow of energy to periodically change direction, is more practical for transmitting massive quantities of energy, as it is required by a large city or hub of industry. At the time, DC technology only allowed for a power grid with a one-mile radius from the power source. The conflict between the two methods and their masters came to be known as the War of Currents, forever immortalized by the band AC or DC, respectively. Tesla insisted that he could increase the efficiency of Edison's prototypical dynamos, and eventually wore down Edison enough to let him try. Edison, Tesla later claimed, even promised him $50,000 if he succeeded. Tesla worked around the clock for several months and made a great deal of progress. When he demanded his reward, Edison claimed that the offer was a joke, saying, 
When you become a full-fledged American, you will appreciate an American joke. Edison offered a $10 a week raise instead. Ever prideful, Tesla quit and spent the next few months picking up odd jobs across New York City. Nikola Tesla suddenly became a ditch digger. After dig ditching for a couple of months, Tesla struck a partnership with George Westinghouse, which automatically put him in rivalry with Thomas Edison. Edison's DC system created sparks, which is a big hazard, and required cables every kilometer or so, because direct currents could only transmit electricity about a mile, and the cables used were around the thickness of your arm. In other words, it was by no means efficient in getting the job done. Tesla's AC wires were just the opposite. They could transmit electricity much, much further. The cables were much, much thinner, and best of all, no sparks. The fight was on, and the prize was the privilege of lighting the entire world. By 1893, there had been many shady deals and patents stolen. Deep down, Edison knew Tesla's system was better than his, but obviously he didn't want the public to know. Edison's solution was extremely shady. He gathered a group of schoolboys and paid each 25 cents for every pet they stole from the owner. Edison then went around telling people that it was because of Tesla's AC system that all the pets are missing. Then, he publicly electrocuted the animals using Tesla's AC system, saying it was dangerous. Furthermore, he invented the electric chair, making sure it used AC currents. Tesla defended AC currents by testing it out publicly on himself. This was the end of Edison's DC currents, and as the years went on, DC currents were not very common as the use of AC currents went up and up. Nowadays, we use AC currents only. Now that we've seen the deep story of GE, let's take a look at how large the company is today. So as of December 2013, GE had a total of 307,000 employees. Even though this information is a bit out of date, we can conclude that the company is much larger today. Its market cap is $288.1 billion. The CEO is Jeffrey Immelt. GE is ranked 24 on the Fortune 500. They got a revenue of $146 billion a year and $650 billion of assets. It is listed number 9 on Forbes' most valuable brands list. A really cool fact is within the capital market, GE, in terms of market share, are about half of JP Morgan Chase, Bank of America, or Citigroup, which is massive because these are made up of 28 companies since 1990. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you're listening to this right now, comment your favorite animal, just for fun. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. I upload once or twice a month, and I will post these types of documentaries. Alright, bye!